They say that life is full of surprises. It is full of ups and downs, thrills and spills. Sometimes you have to take the rough with the smooth. Here we go then. Hello and welcome to another English addict live from the UK. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh, it looks very nice outside we have a lot of sunshine at the moment however don't be fooled by the weather it looks very nice outside let's have another look shall we it's looking rather lovely and glorious you can see the sun shining in the distance across the landscape of Shropshire Yes, it does look nice, but apparently later on today we are going to get lots of heavy rain and winds as well. Strong winds will be lashing the UK later on. So it looks as if the weather here in the UK is going to get very rough and very turbulent later on. So here we are. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. Here we go. First of all, I wasn't with you on Friday. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about this today because it is something that is very personal and something that I'm having to cope with at the moment in my real life away from YouTube. Suffice it to say, I wasn't with you on Friday, for which I apologise. I know lots of people were waiting for me, but I wasn't there. Unfortunately, on Thursday night, my mother was rushed into hospital and that is where she is now. And that is all I'm going to say about that today. So my mother at the moment is at the moment in hospital. So that's the reason why I wasn't with you on Friday, for which I apologise. There were things happening that I could not control. You know what life is like sometimes. Things come along out of the blue, without warning. And that, as they say, is life, I suppose. I suppose that's what you would call it. We have the live chat. We have lots of things to talk about. I haven't prepared too many things today because I've been busy with other things, doing other stuff, as I just mentioned. A little bit busy over the past couple of days with certain things. However, I am here to talk to you live. And of course, we have the live chat as well. Let us not forget the live chat. I am at the moment trying to get the live chat on the screen. There it is. Oh, hello to everyone hello to the live chat and nice to see you all here today i wonder who was first on today's live chat let's have a look marwa marwa or mawa i hope i pronounce your name right hello to you welcome to the live chat and guess what you are first today <laughs> Let's keep our spirits up today. I'm sure I'm not the only person having problems in the world, so let's not dwell on that for too long. Hello to you. Hello also to Vitas. Hello to Haile Kwang. Hello, Pappy. Hello, Jimmy. Jimmy from Hong Kong. Hello to you. I like your your little icon, your little emoji. I like that. It looks like a little pig. Does it have anything to do with the Chinese New Year? I wonder. Hello, Guadalupe. Hello, Martha. Hello, Palmyra. Hello, Antonia. Maria. Hello, Maria. Nice to see you here as well. Also, Hankry and Olga. Hello, also, Grace. Noemi. Pachu. Cory, Chris. Oh, my goodness. So many people here already. Hello, Helena as well. 
Maria again Christina hello Christina how are you I'm okay thank you very much I'm not too bad I really can't complain I always think to myself there are people in the world much worse off than myself and that's what I like to think about and it always keeps me going you see hello also to Sassy Sassy hello also Belarusia hi Belarusia nice to see you here as well something that I saw on the live chat last Wednesday we were talking about retiring last week and I noticed that Belarusia mentioned I noticed that you mentioned on the live chat that you have a friend who is still working and they are into their 70s so they are over the age of 70 and they are still doing their job I think that's incredible very interesting so we were talking last week about retiring and for those who were getting worried no I'm not thinking of retiring just yet however <laughs> as I said at the start of today's live stream you never know we never know what is around the corner waiting for us so as far as I'm aware and as far as I can tell at the moment sadly I don't have a crystal ball I cannot see into the future but I would like to continue doing this for as long as possible and I suppose for as long as you want me to do it so if you want me to do this I will carry on doing it is that a deal OK that's what we'll do then Mr Bruno Beatriz apparently it's very hot at the moment in Argentina there are many parts of the world suffering extreme weather we have Australia I suppose a lot of people have been talking about that one also we have other parts of the world suffering severe weather as well here in the UK we are about to have some severe weather would you like to have a look at what is coming our way here it is so here is the weather for the next 24 hours and you will see there is a storm heading towards us storm Brendan that's what they've called it apparently the the weather forecasters in Ireland have named this particular storm storm Brendan so there it is you can see it flying towards us and also we can have a closer look as well so let's get in a little closer so there it is again the UK and there is the storm that is heading our way storm Brendan and this is going to hit the UK tonight and also early tomorrow morning so a very big storm coming towards the UK right now and apparently where I live the wind will be very strong around 85 miles an hour so we are going to get a very strong storm coming our way tonight and it looks as if it's going to be a rather violent storm a rather ferocious storm and maybe there will be some damage caused by this particular storm as well oh my goodness I don't like the sound of that to be honest so as we always say as a storm arrives or if a storm is on the way we always tell people to batten down the hatches <laughs> I love that expression if you have to batten down the hatches it means you have to seal all of your doors and windows you have to make sure that they are locked and everything is secure because the wind is approaching the storm is on its way so we have a very big storm on its way right now here in the UK we might talk a little bit about that later on at around about half past two around 10 minutes from now hopefully we will get Mr Steve on the live chat today I am tempting Mr Steve with a very nice snack so this is another one of Mr Steve's favorite snacks and today it is a digestive biscuit 
with a little bit of cheddar cheese on top can you see the piece of cheddar cheese i happen to know that mr steve loves digestive biscuits with a little piece of cheddar cheese so that's what we're doing today we will be tempting we will be luring mr steve into the studio with that particular snack but the big question is will steve take the bait if you take the bait it means you actually take the thing or you go towards the thing that is being used to tempt you so that's what i'm doing today i will be using one of mr steve's favorite snacks to get him onto the live chat and also into my studio as well lots of people on the live stream hello blues bird where are you mr duncan i'm here right now live from england and as long as nothing else happens in my life <laughs> i am normally with you on sunday wednesday and friday from 2 p.m uk time so you can catch me right here on youtube on sunday wednesday and friday 2 p.m uk time don't forget to check the time difference where you are so that is when i am on and for those who want to get in touch you are more than welcome to send me an email you can follow me on facebook and also if you want to you could help me to continue with my work by sending a small donation that's interesting apparently ah, ooh, yes. ooh. apparently this year the Chinese New Year is the year of the snake apparently it's the snake year which happens to be my birth year as well so my Chinese zodiac sign is the snake so oh yeah, that's interesting the snake is the biggest reason why he is going to join us thank you very much your snack looks very tempting well i hope it is i hope mr steve will be tempted into the studio by my lovely snack that i've spent such a long time preparing for him i have i was in the kitchen working very hard and this is the snack that I will be feeding Mr. Steve today. Hopefully he will come in and he will be very excited when he sees today's snack that I've prepared for Mr. Steve. Hmm. So that coming in around about seven minutes from now. Hello, Irene. Nice to see you here today. Busy week here in the UK. Busy for me for reasons that i mentioned earlier the royal family oh what a difficult few months they've had what <laughs> so the latest of the royal family saga apparently uh, megan and harry they want to leave they want to leave the uk they don't want to stay in the uk anymore they want to be far away from the royal family as far away as possible i think this happens a lot though in families don't you don't you find sometimes families are either very close together they are very close and they keep in touch all the time or a family can be very distant so maybe the children leave home and maybe they move to another country or another part of the country you are living in or they are living in and so they become distant they become very distant very far away from each other maybe they don't communicate very often as well so there are times when a family can be very distant maybe they don't communicate with each other as much as they should 
and there are very very various reasons for that many reasons why that can happen so yes very interesting a lot of people here in the UK are preoccupied at the moment with what is happening in the British royal family Luis Mendez hello Luis nice to see you back and apparently you are very happy to see me yes I'm here again today on a Sunday yes I didn't mention <laughs> did you know it's Sunday <laughs> Thank you very much for your company. We are having a busy day today. I've had a busy week. How was your week? Hello also to Anna. Last Saturday, says Anna, I went to the hospital to see a friend of mine who has had brain surgery. Now that sounds serious. That sounds rather serious. She was not bad and I was absolutely emotional when she could speak better and singing her perfect songs so yes I think it is a worrying time especially if someone is going in going into hospital for surgery if they are going in for an operation or something like that so it can be very difficult as you know if you are a regular viewer you will know that I hate hospitals very much I don't like hospitals whether I'm a patient or a visitor or even if I'm just walking past a hospital I just don't want to look I don't want to think about it too much so I've spent the last two days at a hospital so as you can imagine I wasn't enjoying it very much hello Corey what about the strikes in Paris Irene and also Lewis as well maybe Lewis Mendez can also talk about this very interesting to note that here in the UK on British television on the news here in the UK they are not talking about the riots in France at all they're not mentioning them at all it's very strange so I've been forced I, I've I've actually had to go and find another news source outside the UK to find out about what's happening in France so a lot of dramatic things taking place and apparently the reason for the protests is a, a change to the way that pensions are worked out and given to those in France and it would appear that the French government is slowly backing down albeit temporarily hello Netra hello to you as well hello also to Palmyra hello Hanan 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 asks who is Mr Steve well hopefully we will see Mr Steve soon because I have one of his favorite snacks right here in the studio there it is so today I will be tempting Mr Steve hopefully he will take the bait and he will come into the studio to join us and there you can see what we are using today a lovely digestive biscuit with some cheese very nice I like the look of that also we have a couple of subjects to talk about today phrases idioms connected to rain and water and I suppose to make the actual subject a little broader we could expand a little bit more and say general weather as well so we will look at that in a little while also what is the difference between this word and this word so what are the differences or what is the difference between these two words a little bit later on I will be talking about them and maybe Mr Steve will be talking to us about his plans for the future because we were talking about retiring last week I'm not retiring yet but 
we will see what happens however a lot of people do retire at an early age some people retire later in life some people never retire they carry on doing the things that they've always done forever and ever until they drop a bit like Belarusia's friend who is still working as a dentist even though they are now into their 70s and they are still doing their job the job that they obviously enjoy I think so it would appear that Britain is going to have some fun with these storms alongside its southern ally Australia well it's a little bit the opposite really we're going to have lots of rain and in Australia in Australia they're having lots of hot weather but it is summer there don't forget it is summer in Australia at the moment hello also to Celia or should I say Cecilia hello to you we are having very hot weather in Belo Horizonte it feels like I am living in hell I know the feeling hello Massimo yes the royal family is in trouble I saw a photo where the Queen drove without a seat belt and also a driving license well I don't think the Queen has a driving license did you know that I don't think the Queen actually holds a driver's license I heard that many years ago how true it is I have no idea but I heard many years ago that the Queen actually doesn't hold either a passport or a driving license she doesn't have either of those things because well she's the Queen to be honest with you I mean everyone knows who the Queen is I suppose <laughs> her face is everywhere on stamps on coins on notes so all sorts of British currency has a picture of the Queen on it hello also Chris in the Philippines there is a volcano Mount Mount Tal which has erupted after many uh, after many after a long time causing people to evacuate from the area hello Anna as well so many people are here now we are going to take a short break and then after that Mr Steve hopefully will be joining us so a quick break and then hopefully we will have Mr Steve here in the studio I will get a little snack ready and hopefully I will be able to tempt Mr Steve into the studio is Mr Steve what what was he doing there it looked like he was fighting with something <laughs> no in fact it was Mr Steve with his poncho doing his poncho dance something we recorded a couple of years ago and the rain is on the way so we will all be wearing our ponchos this time tomorrow because it looks as if there is a ferocious storm heading this way however now wait wait a moment we have something more important to talk about than the weather we have a special guest but unfortunately our special guest sometimes is very shy so today I have decided to make a little snack there it is can you see it there is the snack for my special guest but unfortunately he is a very shy person as you know and what we have to do we have to lure him into the studio so 
I will leave the snack here and hopefully we will be able to tempt Mr. Steve into the studio. It might take a couple of moments. It might take a few seconds. So please bear with me. Trust me. It will be worth the wait. So here we go. We have to tempt Mr. Steve into the studio. Oh, got you. We've got him again. We've got Mr. Steve. We've caught him. There is no escape for you this time, Mr. Steve. You are here. You are now forced onto the Internet in front of all these lovely people so what do you think about that it's a very dry i need some water mr duncan have some water i can't swallow it <laughs> i can't produce enough saliva mr steve doesn't normally have difficulty swallowing things oh. but today today he can't get it in oh have you got it down <coughs> that's better mr duncan oh once again you've managed to lure me I have lure me. Okay, lure me. Could you move over slightly onto the live stream? Okay, um, with a tasty snack, and that was, of course, a digestive biscuit, a wholemeal biscuit with cheese on. Yes, is uh, have I got any anything in my mouth? I want one, to look one presentable. Of your, one of your favourite snacks. Well, Mr. Duncan, can you see what I've got on today? No, you can't. No, <laughs> I, I knew you can't. I knew this was going to happen. Do you want me to jump up and down? Wait, wait don't jump, don't <laughs> jump anywhere. What I will do is I will set one of the other cameras up, and you can go in, stand in front of the other camera. Ah. I've got a very special T-shirt on today, viewers. Hello to everybody in the world wide web of English. Uh, Mr. Duncan, of course, has probably already said that today. But no, a friend of mine has been on a tour of a continent. He was there for three weeks on holiday and he toured many different countries in a certain continent. Now, uh, maybe you could guess which one it was. Maybe did anybody get a little, if I say condor, maybe that will give somebody a clue. But he went to various countries in this continent and many of you will know it's a particular continent that I wish to visit okay show us the oh, I was uh, very jealous condor is that the same spelling as the bird i'm not sure mr duncan i'm not sure oh okay you notice i'm a little taller today yes have you noticed as well because well for two reasons one steve is wearing a pair of trainers sneakers they're running shoes but they, they have a very thick sole. So Mr. Steve is looking taller. Also, I've slightly repositioned the camera as oh. well. Oh, right. So the I camera so. Is, it is, is slightly different. That's why I'm having difficulty getting. Can you just move over, Steve? Yes, of course. Uh, he always so. likes to push me off the screen. I'm not pushing you off. I'm just moving you over. So go and show over there on the other right. camera. Show your T-shirt. Special T-shirt. Your right. special T-shirt. Now, don't forget, we can't hear you. It's a it's a camera, but it has no microphone, unfortunately. So so here is Mr. Steve coming onto your screen now. There he is. Oh, I like that, Steve. Do you like it? Should I stay still? Should I get a bit closer? Well, we can't hear what you're saying because you're not on the microphone. In fact, I think I prefer it with you not I on. I heard that. <laughs> with there we go. So there is Mr. Steve with his lovely t-shirt and and one of your work colleagues uh brought this back for you so very nice very nice what does it say on the back does it say something on the back yes oh turn around better look first well turn around well is it rude no okay I, <laughs> so it says colca araquipa maybe that is something in the peruvian language so come on Come back, Steve. Just doing my modelling. Apparently, Steve seems to think that he's 
a fashion model. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. So you're back. So it, it's Peru. Peru. That is correct. Friend of mine. In fact, he went to Brazil, Peru, Argentina, oh. Ecuador. Um, him and his wife went all over the place. It must have cost them a fortune. You must you must have been a bit jealous as well because you want to go to Brazil. Yes, I do. Well, I'd like to go to South America. So he's been to quite a few of the countries. He did a bit of a tour, a tour for three weeks. And while he was away, all his customers left him and went elsewhere <laughs> because he was away so long. I'm only wow. joking. I'm only joking. What a strange thing um, to say. <laughs> Well, I was jealous, jealous, green with jealousy because he went to visit South America with his uh, partner, well, his wife. Well, They've been married for, for uh, many years. I, I, I love the way you, you, you seem to sort of divide being a partner with being a wife. But technically, it's the same thing, isn't it? Yes. But if you say partner. Yes. Normally, it means unmarried. It normally means unmarried. If unmarried. you say my partner in life. You, I've just noticed, Mr. Duncan, there's some very extensive cobwebs. Uh, <laughs> the lights in the studio are highlighting what can only be described as very poor tidiness in Mr. Duncan's <laughs> Mr. Duncan studio. S sorry, is, is this I, a... the webs? The webs are everywhere. They're gigantic. Th those aren't webs. They look like webs to me, no. Mr. Duncan. The, the spider must be about that big. Yes. OK. I'm going to come in here with so, a feather duster. OK, then. Well, I would do if it wasn't for the fact that I've thrown the feather duster away because it's useless. I'm loving all this information. A feather duster, that's what you use to get rid of cobwebs in the corners of yes. your rooms. But my mother always had a feather duster, which she used. Uh, but they're actually very poor at the job because they leave feathers come off the uh, does, it, does anybody know what a feather duster is i think i think i think there are feather dusters in other countries it's just, it's a pole and it's got lots of feathers uh concentrated into the top and the idea is the feathers will get rid of all the cobwebs and spiders but so they're not very effective it's just basically something you use for dusting a bit of a, a sort of a brush with a long handle but it's got made of feathers yes we got <laughs> the, the clue hmm. is in the word feather well, I don't know if people use feather dusters in mm. uh, it can be they, they're very ticklish. They're, they're, they, if you buy a feather duster, it's often got connotations with sort of how can I put it, Mr. Duncan? Um, I don't know. I recreational don't... activities that I involve don't... some form of stimulation. What? Feather dusters are used in a way aren't they i've never heard this at all yes they they are because i think if you sort of rub a feather duster over somebody's body it's supposed to be so i've heard it's supposed to be arousing oh, Mr. I see. Duncan, a feather duster you must have heard of that yes he's he's led a sheltered life well wow. well i mean i've just heard about it it's just what people say okay. so uh <laughs> I forgot to change the camera, by the way. Everyone's complaining. They're all saying, Mr. Duncan, change the camera. We can just see your empty studio. I forgot to change it. You see that that that's what people were seeing. Oh, I see. Right. So everything that we've just said has been fairly well, pointless. Well, no, we can. Well, we, we can still be heard, but not seen. But it's a good job. We've got people watching. Some people might prefer that. Of course, they, you might prefer not to be able to see us. It's a little bit like a podcast. So close your eyes and imagine that you are listening to a podcast and it's pretty much the same thing, really. So so this is a podcast with pictures. Isn't that nice? Not very pretty pictures, though. No, I think. In fact, to be honest with you, I think I prefer this view. So this is where I normally sit, Steve, in this chair. Can you see in the distance there is a chair? And that is where I spend a lot of my time mm. sitting, editing, typing, sending emails, reading emails. So the corner of my studio over there is where I spend a lot of my time doing composing, composing and writing and doing all sorts of things. So there, and you can see the clock, of course, in the distance as well. It is just coming up to quarter to three, Mr. Steve. Yes, well, just above that clock and to the left are all the cobwebs. And I'm going to get a duster out later and get rid of them. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Somebody For says, poor spiders. Why would we have to remove the nets? Um, well, you mean webs, of course. I, I tell you what, I'm going to try and focus on those webs because now I want to see them. I want to see the cobwebs in my studio. Would you like to see the cobwebs? in the studio because Steve now has embarrassed me. I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. You'll have to come to this view, Mr. Duncan. OK. Where the light is catching them. Yes. Well, um, the reason we don't want uh, cobwebs <laughs> uh, and spiders in the house is because they multiply just like all animals do once you leave them to themselves. And in fact, this studio when Mr. Duncan first moved in seven years ago had an all I can describe as an as an infestation of spiders so if something's infested it means there's a lot of them so and you, we usually use that word to refer to creatures like mice an infestation of mice or rats spiders fleas uh, you would normally use the word in, in that way to describe too many of a particular animal or insect in one place, in a room, in a house. And uh, when we removed certain cupboards, it was obvious that the previous residents had not bothered to get rid of the spiders. And they'd been, there were like, you couldn't count them, there were hundreds of them. And the problem is you do, really don't want them because they become a bit of a pain in the neck. Yes, here we go. So here, 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 are the, here are the cobwebs. Apparently these are the cobwebs. <laughs> the cobwebs that Mr. Steve was talking about. There they are. They're not that bad. Well, not from that angle, Mr. Duncan. From this angle, they look a lot... I, I don't think you can really see them from where you are. Where are you going? No, that's it. You come over to where I am, Mr. Duncan, more over this way, and you will see what I mean. OK, then. Well, uh, unfortunately, my equipment doesn't do that. Never mind. I have I have awkward equipment. The light is catching them my in equipment, a certain way. My equipment is awkward. It's not the first time I've had that said to me. Cobwebs, yes. That's what we use to describe... Uh, the uh, well, the, the, the spiders spin cobwebs, don't they? Because they catch their prey, uh, flies, and uh, well, there's some spiders eat other spiders. In fact, the spiders that we had infested in the room here are a particular type of spider called um, now. What what do they call Mr. Duncan? I can't remember. They're cellar spiders. They've got very very long legs and very small bodies compared to a normal spider. So they're about that big. And they hang from the corners of the room. And if you go near them, they vibrate very rapidly because they think you can't see them. Uh, but they actually catch other spiders, uh, which is something quite unusual. They're, they're cannibals in a way, if, if you think about it. They're eating other spiders. So. And I've, I've been talking to the neighbours and apparently lots of the neighbours also have a problem with these types of spiders. They're normally found in dark places, hence their name, cellar spider. So they're normally found in dark cellars or rooms where it's damp. Uh, they're horrible. I don't like them because w when you go into a, into the garage, there's, there's millions of them in, in our garage where I keep the car. Millions? Millions, I would say, because they multiply very, very rapidly. And you go in and they drop on you. <laughs> they do. So, you know. Here, here we go then. I think we've got, I think we, we might have, we might have it. I think we've got no, one of sure. the, it there it is. Can you see it? There we go. It's not it's not very clear on the picture, but you can see a cobweb. That's the problem with cobwebs. The problem with cobwebs is you can't see them very clearly. And that's the reason why I can't see them. So you can see that there is a cobweb, one of many cobwebs in my studio. I don't know why Mr. Steve wants to embarrass me so much. With no, this. I'm not embarrassed. I'm ashamed. Saturino said, yes, didn't we have some spiders in a box? We did. We had... I was looking after a friend's tarantulas, which, of course, are very big spiders, about as big as your hand. Uh, Mr. Duncan's there pointing out the cobwebs. Uh, so, yes, Saturino, uh, we were looking after my friend's tarantulas, 
Uh, but he's now got them back because he was renting somewhere and he wasn't allowed to keep pets, not even spiders. So we had them for a year. They've gone back now. He's looking after them. So we're glad to get them out of the house. Uh... So what have you been talking about today, Mr. Duncan? I feel as though I've been boring everybody. We've we've uh -huh. mainly been talking about cobwebs. <laughs> I, I think since I, I've been on. I think 85 percent of today's live stream has been uh, us talking about cobwebs. So thank you, Steve, anyway, for, for letting me know about the cobweb. Uh, that was really, really useful. Christine, of course, is right. When you live in the countryside, it's normal to have spiders. It is because... There's a lot more of them and they 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 come into the house when you've got the windows open in the summer. I've seen them crawling in. Mm. Another thing, th those spiders are also called daddy long leg spiders. That's the other word for them. So they, they're a particular type of spider. And until we moved here, we, we hadn't really seen them before. But this house is full of them. And every year we, we, we try not to kill them, Steve, don't we? We try our best. Ah, Palmyra says that. Let me go and fetch something. Oh, I know what Steve is going to get. The, the thing that Steve is now going to get was the first ever mystery item on my first ever live chat. My first ever live stream. You don't mind, do you, Mr. Duncan? No. Me fetching my uh, device here. There we go. Let me give you the full view. Are you sure that's not your, your douche? It's not a, a lightsaber. Yes. Uh, it looks like something you insert, something that you insert somewhere. Always rude, aren't you, Mr. Duncan? No, I didn't. Well, in fact, this is uh, a humane way, a humane. Humane. If something is humane, it means that, what does it mean, Mr. Duncan? Something humane means it will not cause any strain uh, or suffering. That's it. Or, or fear. In someone so you are doing something without causing any any cruelty or without being cruel so for example if your cat maybe you have a cat maybe you have a very old pussy and your pussy is old and it's seen better days and unfortunately your old cat can no longer walk it's ill and clearly it's suffering so sometimes people will have their animal put down, but the Killed. method, the method, the method is humane. So they do it humanely. So maybe I think normally they use an injection. So maybe they inject something into the animal to make it sleepy and then it will slowly go to sleep forever. A non-humane way of killing a cat would be, for example, to uh, just sort of hit it a lot. That's it. Beat it with a stick. Or kick it. So that would be a non-humane way of... Uh, so a humane way of removing spiders... Well, they talk about it when you... People... Meat eaters, of course, uh, if you're going to kill animals to eat them, you most people want to know that that animal has been killed humanely. Yes. So quickly, so it doesn't suffer. I'm going to be honest with you, Steve. Uh, I've not met, met many vegetarians who who just eat non-animal products who are happy with even humane killing no but, but if you're a meat eater you don't want to you don't want your animal to have suffered when it's done no that's you know, true yeah uh, but uh, what about if you're um see some people think that plants have feelings don't they so how do you kill a plant humanely yes well this know. is it vegetables there's no such thing there, there's a little carrot mm. What about the little carrot living in the ground? A little S carrot minding its own business, just living and having a lovely day, thinking, oh, this is nice, isn't it? Oh, I've got my I've got my lovely little warm space in the ground and then my little my little f leaves are coming out into the beautiful sunshine. And that little carrot is having a lovely time. And then suddenly someone comes along and pulls it out of the ground chops its head off and then slices it into little pieces after skinning it and and then they boil it in water or eat it raw yes so this is used to catch spiders in the house so it's got a little can you hear that we can all hear that steve 
it's like a vacuum cleaner and it sucks the spider you put it up to the ceiling and you you turn this on and it sucks it in and then you let it out outside mm. and that's what i do shall i see if i can find one in your room uh, no no i wasn't planning on this being a whole live stream oh, mr duncan hang on there's one under spiders. your there's one under your cap is there Hey got it got it try, try not to let it out try not to suck my brain up well so that that was very interesting thank you steve for bringing up that terrible cobweb in the corner of the studio thank you very much you can actually see the live chat there as well now by oh, the way brilliant i've done something very lovely for you isn't that nice oh, Mr. Duncan, because yes i like to look at the live chat somebody just said there what is the meaning of the idiom get a rain check if you get a rain check it means you put something off to another day or another time so a rain check is something that you arrange to do at a later date because an event has been cancelled or called off so maybe a sporting event is supposed to happen but unfortunately it rains so the person will receive something that says you can come to the next game or the next match so quite often as an idiom we will say i will give you a rain check it means we will do something at a later date because i can't do it at the moment unfortunately people How's like the, the the weather idioms rain on my parade yet yeah, to patch you to spoil someone's fun to take away the enjoyment of something maybe a person comes along and they try to take away your happiness or your spirit of joy and contentment so someone comes along and they try to take it away they try to rain on your parade yeah so if you were having a nice outdoor parade on a lovely day and it rained it would ruin that parade so it doesn't mean literally rain they could ruin it in other ways they could be nasty to you uh, or they could hit you or they could do something that would make that event that you're part of unpleasant Saturino mentions euthanasia now I suppose euthanasia is one of those subjects that is very hard just to talk about without any preparation but basically we are talking about putting someone and by that I mean an animal or a person out of their misery so we are entering a very big subject there quite a large subject that so not only would you would you put an animal out of its misery so euthanasia quite often is used with animals we often say that they are put oh. out put down or in american english they say put put out i'm sure it's put out i think euthanasia is mainly used though isn't it mr duncan in reference to humans quite often yes so to end oh. the suffering of a person to end the suffering of a human being we often talk about euthanasia but not not the best subject to be talking about today by the way it's a very controversial subject because most countries uh because a doctor would never intentionally kill a person or end a person's life mm. uh even though they are suffering and have no chance of well, living doctors uh, are not allowed to they, they're they, not allowed to they have sworn they have to swear so when a doctor becomes a doctor they have to swear not to cause any harm or distress or suffering to a human being at all so they call it the hippocratic oath that they have to take so yes have, but of course uh, if you decided you wanted to end your own life uh or you wanted somebody to end your life for you because you were suffering then that is a very controversial subject which we won't get into because uh, if you want you can't do it in this country it's not allowed it's against the law mm. i think it is in most countries switzerland so you have to go to switzerland if you want to do if you want to end your life uh humanely obviously and uh you want somebody else to do it for you so what i suppose is but could you describe suicide as as euthanasia i think with euthanasia i think the point is that you get somebody else to end your life for you oh, okay uh but obviously that's not the same as murder obviously there's a difference there yeah, so although, euthanasia is that you you've got a terminal illness 
and you want, to, for example, you've got a terminal illness, you've got six months to live or a year to live, but for that entire time, you are going to really suffer. The doctors have said there's no chance of you surviving, no chance of you recovering ever. Uh, so some people might decide um, that they want their life to end, but they want somebody to do it in a humane way for them. Mm. Uh, doctors can't do it. It's not legal for anybody to do it in this country. If you do that, you will go to prison. So if if you, you if you stood by the railway track and you got your friend to push you in front of the train, but that that's humane, isn't it? Would you say that's humane? Because Probably it, not. It's, it's pretty fast, isn't it? It's pretty. I don't quick. think that's humane. I, I don't think we're, we're, with humane, you don't want a lot of mess afterwards. Oh, I see. Oh, I think that you know you want the body to remain fairly intact. Oh, okay. Then. No, it's the, the typical situation is that somebody's got terminal cancer. Terminal cancer. Okay. Well, you, cancer that uh, can't be operated on. No, nothing can treat it. You, you, it's gone to the point where there is no turning back. Yeah, it's terminal. It's terminal, and but you know those last few months of your life are going to be pretty awful. So you ask a relative, for example, it could be your partner who loves you very much, will you, when it gets really bad and I can't help myself anymore, will you end my life for me? And uh, that's you can't do it. It's not legal in this country because that person would probably go to prison for murder mm. even is, though it, the person was going to die anyway so it. you have it, to go to switzerland it's still classed as murder yes it so is. There, there is no there is no way of taking a person's life without being somehow charged with murder or manslaughter that's another one isn't it i don't know why they call yes. it manslaughter they should call it person slaughter it's interesting that euthanasia has got the word youth in it I think. I yeah. mean, it's not spelled the same, but youth usually means life, and, and doesn't it? Y o u t h. Uh, of course, it's spelled differently, but it's but it's pronounced the same. And as an action, it's euthanize. Yes, that's right. Uh, somebody just asked about an idiom. What is the meaning of "you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink"? Ah, yes. Well, maybe maybe I want Mr. Steve to to take some advice from me. Maybe. I want to give yes. Mr. Steve some some of my wisdom that I've gathered during my long and well, productive, long, productive, long, long life. <laughs> so I want to pass on something to Mr. Steve, a piece of advice, something I want to let Steve know about. And I believe it will help him to change his life and make it better. However, maybe. Mr. Steve won't take the advice. Maybe Steve will just ignore my advice and just say, what, what does Mr. Duncan know about that? He knows nothing. What a what a stupid idiot. I'm going to ignore his advice. So that's where the expression comes from. You can lead Mr. Steve to water, but you can't make him drink. That's it. But in that case, when we are talking about the idiom, it's a horse. Yes, advice that you might give to somebody, but if they don't take up that advice, then that's their choice. They don't, you know, you can't make somebody do something. Um, oh yes, which all oh, right? No, that's all right. Yes, uh, yes. Change the subject from murder to merry life. Yes, let's let's just lighten things up. Let's lighten the mood. Let's talk about. Something that's a bit happier, Mr. Well, you, you started it by mentioning cobwebs. It's amazing how a conversation can go from one subject to another. So because of here we go, I will show you because because of this cobweb in my studio, we ended up talking about euthanasia. Isn't that strange how one subject or one topic can lead to to another? Isn't it weird? Yes, we're not uh, getting good feedback about talking on the subject of euthanasia. No. Well, I'm sure uh, I'm sure a lot of people are against it for for various reasons, moral or religious reasons. So, yes, I could imagine that. So, mm. in Switzerland, it is it isn't allowed in oh, Switzerland. Right. So, where where did I get that from? Where, well, people do in go, Switzerland, it isn't do. allowed to end someone's life. Those who came to die here, they have to do it by themselves. Ah. Yes. Right. Well, that's what I thought. Well, when you said that, 
I thought that the person has to still do it themselves because I saw a documentary about this mm -hmm. very moving documentary about a man who had an illness that was going to destroy his his body and I think his brain and he decided to go to another country Switzerland uh, but when they do it you still have to do it yourself yes but people can give you the the, the medicines don't they but that's it and you might uh, and yes it's like it's like uh, I don't know it's like if you owned a railway track and you had a large steam train so the steam train and the railway track are there and they're yours but the, and then you you let the steam train go but then you say to the person right there, there's the track there's the steam train but you have to step in front of it would that be right <sighs> always with the jumping on to a train track mr Dun everybody knows how mr Duncan will end his life if he wants to <laughs> uh, blood is thicker than water that's a good idiom uh, it means that your close relatives um, are uh, essentially more important than uh, people from the friends that's yes. essentially what it means so it. no matter what your family do to you um, you will always forgive them that's what the phrase means you will always for you will forgive them far more things than you would forget you for forgive your friends yes so, so what, blood i.e blood relatives so you will accept a lot more from your your family bad things and indiscretions and things that might annoy you so you might lose a friend or, or get rid of a friend from your life for doing something however you might be more forgiving when it comes to one of your family members if your brother or sister stole some some money from you for example yes or from you or from another relative yes from an or from another relative or even from anybody else that's it if they've even, if they'd committed a crime maybe they'd murdered somebody uh, you would be more likely to accept and forgive them and then you would if it was somebody who wasn't a relative mm. i.e the water is me is somebody who isn't a relative that's it because of course um evolution in, in terms of evolution and survival it's our families that are more important and no matter what they do the survival of the family unit is most important because you're passing on your genes mm. anyway anyway what do you mean anyway i haven't finished my sentence i've got some things to show using rain because we have a storm coming storm do we <laughs> yes what do you say when you've got a storm coming we better batten down the hatches yes i've done that one already okay storm brendan i was in the garden storm brendan is on its way storm brendan, brendan. it's been uh, it's actually been named by the irish meteorological organization so they've named it so that's why it has an irish name you see right. so brendan storm storm oh brendan <laughs> save something for a rainy day see there is another one you see see what it did because that rainy you see it's rainy rainy day save something for a rainy day you put something back until you really need it you really need something so you put it away or you put it somewhere safe until you need it you put something away or save something for a rainy day when you really need it what could you what could you what could you use as an example for that types of food maybe money money yes mostly money. mostly people will save money for a rainy day and what we mean by rainy day in that idiom is bad luck or, so when you get some bad luck yes or, or a situation where you need something where you need something so money yes something happens maybe something breaks down or your car breaks down you need to have it repaired hmm. so you've saved some money for the rainy day hmm. that when things aren't going so well hmm. hello also to palmyra hello belarusia i was told by a friend's grandmother who was 10 years spent 10 years in bed that she couldn't move she couldn't talk but when somebody talked to her mm. a tear could be seen from her eye very sad so sometimes you might appear to be completely unresponsive but maybe you still you are still aware of what is happening around you palmyra says in their country they say we say save something for a black day hmm. yes yeah, some when things are going wrong that's it 
so save it for a rainy day catch a falling star and put it in your pocket save it save it for a rainy day Pedro says here that his brother always stole money from him from his savings box but he always forgave him well that's it but if a friend did that you'd probably or somebody you didn't know very well you'd mm. call the police yes it is strange how we are more willing to forgive a family member for their for their bad behavior because because what's most important to most people is the family unit uh, mother father grandparents children so you will forgive a, a lot for them because you don't want to give up that relationship because mm. that's all about passing on your genes. Yes, you, so, you, uh, you seem obsessed. You seem obsessed today with passing on your genes. I'm not particularly obsessed with that. How are your genes? They're going to stay with me because how, how I haven't many, got any children. Have you got any Ys or Xs? Well, I as far as I know, I've never fathered a child. As far as I know... There are no, I have no offspring. A little mini Steve. As far as I know, there's nobody out there. I wonder what, I wonder what a baby would look like if, if you had a baby, if you actually fathered a baby. I wonder what it looked like. It probably looked like this, really. I mean, let's face it. Steve looks like a, a large baby anyway. I mean, it's incredibly sad for humanity that I'm not passing my genes on, or not yet at least. I mean, just imagine, you know, the gene pool of the human race without mine in it. Hmm. It's very sad. But, you know, there you go. So That's a, life. A person who saves things for a rainy day can be very cautious. So maybe a person who saves something for a rainy day. Thank you, Anna. What is the name of the person that saves money for a rainy day? Cautious. So maybe a person who is very cautious. They are a person who is always mindful of the amount of money. Sensible. Or, or sensible. A sensible person will always save money for a rainy day. Because life isn't fair and you don't know what's going to happen. You don't have to tell me about that one. Now, sometimes in life, as I said at the start of today's show, sometimes life can be unfair. Sometimes you have ups and downs sometimes you have thrills and spills sometimes things don't go right and here's a good one it never rains but it pours it never rains but it pours that means when something bad happens quite often many bad things will happen at the same time so you might find that there is more than one bad thing happening so maybe this week for me, there were a few things happening that we've had to sort out and deal with. But quite often, lots of things will come along at the same time, won't they, Steve? That's right. So that's typically said by somebody who, if, if you were a so, sort of, you normally say that to cheer somebody up, don't you? If you say that to somebody and they're having a, lo they're having a bad day. Mm. Uh, the car broke down, then they got to work and the, they cut themselves on a pe on some paper or then the boss shouted at them. And uh, <laughs> you might say to somebody to try and cheer them, oh, it never rains, but it pours. That's a terrible, terrible. And you're showing empathy to somebody, my, aren't you? Showing my, understanding to somebody. My day is terrible. I, I cut my finger on a piece of paper. My life is ruined. You can get, a, you can get no, but it's it, the accumulation of different bad things all happening together. You could kill someone with paper, uh, Mr. Duncan. Maybe it wouldn't be a very humane way. Oh, my goodness. What's what's <laughs> what's wrong with you today? You can't. What? I've got dark thoughts today, Mr. Duncan. You, dark are you, thoughts. Are you saying that, that a piece of paper can be used as a weapon? What? I bet they do in prison. Well, that means now they'll be banning paper. I bet it, they do in prisons. I bet I bet they're always slashing each other with, with bits of paper. All, all the prisoners are covered in paper, paper cu cuts. Paper cuts. Uh, but yes, it never rains. It, it never rains, but it pours. It, it's it's a sort of um, you're sort of and, and that often is the case. It's a similar expression to say things. Bad things always come in threes, don't yes, they? Yes. It's 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 a sort of 
it's almost like a part of the human psyche that we set, tend to think that if one bad thing happens, lots of others will probably happen at the same time. And certainly here in the UK, we say things always bad things always come in threes. So if one bad bad thing happens, you're waiting for the other two. And mm. once you've had the third one, you almost oh that's it. I, 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 I'm done for a while now. We do often, my bad looks. We do often think that though, don't we? We often think that mm. bad things bad things come along in in succession groups of three so maybe one thing happens it's bad and then another thing happens and then we believe that there will be another one another bad thing because we always think that there there are always three of them we do i don't know why that is i think it's and then when you've had the third one you think oh what a relief i've i'm going to have a spell now when there's no bad luck so yes it never rains but it pours is a, is a similar expression to saying uh, bad things always come in three mm. uh, but that one's just a bit more specific come rain or shine come rain or shine so this refers to any event anything that's coming your way so whatever happens come rain or shine so whether something is negative or positive so come rain or shine things will always be fine come rain or shine mr duncan will always be here well on sunday yes if, is an expression which means no matter how bad things get then mr duncan will always be here yes. i mean not necessarily always but that is the sort of way you could use that expression i always try to be here unfortunately on friday we had a little problem didn't we my mum was taken into hospital on Thursday night. Oh, so we've been the last two days, haven't we? You haven't explained this yet. I have. Oh, right. Yes. Yes. She's been suddenly taken very, very ill. So um, my mum's in the hospital and that's what we've been doing. We've been going to the hospital for the past couple of days. So that's why I wasn't there with you on Friday. But yes. I will be with you on Wednesday. Don't worry. Uh, this is when you can catch me, by the way. Oh, Sunday, Wednesday and Friday. What's Pedro wrong? wants flags of the day. <laughs> flags of the day <laughs> and the landmarks. So that's where I used to. We used to start the live stream. Didn't, you, did oh, you, you mean fl flags of the world? And I was in a different part of the world every year talking about different uh, highlights of different countries, wasn't I? Yes. Um, so, yes, uh, Pedro does like Flags of the World. Wait there, I'll try and find it. Shall I try and find Flags of the World? No, only Pedro likes it. <laughs> Just for Pedro. It didn't get good feedback, did it, apart from Pedro? I don't remember that. I'm only joking. Are you watching the same live stream? <laughs> uh, Jamila says, Mr. Steve is as right as rain. Oh, I see. As right as rain. That's a good one. We haven't got that. Oh, unless Mr. Duncan has that one here. If something's as right as rain, what, do, what what does that mean, Mr. Duncan? Right as rain means perfectly OK, fit. So it's right as rain. Yes, something is perfect. There, there are no problems. Everything is everything is as right as rain. As it should be. As it should be. Just like rain, I suppose. Rain is as it should be. Rain is rain. I'm trying to find the flags of the world, of you course. You can say, I feel as right as rain, can't you? Yes. Meaning, I feel healthy. I feel happy i feel good i'm as right as rain right as rain that's a very commonly used expression in the uk actually as opposed to feeling down in the dumps uh which uh, if you say you feel down in the dumps that's the opposite to saying right as rain it means you're feeling sad unhappy not necessarily ill just emotionally your mood is is down down in the dumps down in the, you're really cheering everyone else today <laughs> you're, you're not you're not even cheering me up i really do need cheering up today here's something to cheer you all up especially pedro belmont here it is it's steve it's flags of the world <laughs>
so just for Pedro that was flags of the world oh very nice very 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 nice oh look at that now I was quite impressed with the way that I managed to do that what a big head I, I mean not there's no modesty there at all is there I just no managed, modesty I managed to find the flags of the world uh, people are talking about a book Papa Gario and Balzac um, of it that's book and it's a book I think I can't remember who first mentioned it now mm -hmm. saying that it's 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 a book about somebody who saves their money all the time and never gives it to anybody oh uh, isn't that isn't that where the word miser comes from does it I'm sure it is yes I might be mistaken but but we do have a great word called miser it's it's a word but I, I think that comes from a story of a person who would not give their money away they would just keep it and it would just pile up hoard their money well we've got a, a, a similar story but it's may, it may be similar to Scrooge uh, the book that we have here so different cultures probably have different uh, different uh, stories regarding people who save their money up. Mm. and we've got one called Scrooge but that's a great that's a great uh, word miser so a person who keeps their money they don't like to spend money they will save it they will let it pile up in their in their room or put it under their bed many years ago before people used banks people would often put money under their their mattress on the bed I'm a bit of a miser would you say Mr Duncan uh, I don't yeah. like to spend money I like to save it hmm. uh, I've always been a saver rather than a spender uh, which is the complete opposite to my sister she's a spender not a saver uh, um, you know we're, we're, that's the, our typical behaviors I think I spend more now but I think as you I think it's all to do with security with me mm. I like to feel as though I'm never going to be in a position when I don't have any money if I lost my job yes I'd have savings to keep me going yeah I like that security I don't think that's the same thing as a miser a miser just won't spend money at all so it, they, they won't yes. even invest it or put it in the bank they will just keep it all around them it, I, I suppose it's very similar to the fable of, of um, Midas, King Midas. That's another great story where he touched the things around him and everything magically turned to gold. But in the end, he had nothing. He starved to death because he couldn't eat. Because every time he touched the food, it turned to gold. He couldn't eat. So he starved to death. Somebody said there was no flag of Nicaragua. Nicaragua in there Nicaragua that's a very difficult f word for us to pronounce Nicaragua Nicaragua I think that's Nicaragua easy. Have I spelled that correctly easy pronounce that correctly easy well you are an English teacher I would expect you to be able to Mr Duncan <laughs> yes well that was interesting any more any more <laughs> phrases to do with the uh, the weather Mr Duncan yes I'm trying to I'm trying to so we had come rain or shine here is another one and this this is one that we often say when we want to cheer someone up we want to make them feel happy we want to make them feel joyous on top of the world we want them to feel bright and gay keep your sunny side up keep your sunny side up don't worry keep your sunny side up Keep your sunny side up, Mr. Steve. Don't get down. Don't get miserable. Stay cheerful. Keep your sunny side up. Yes, it just means show us your your happy, bright, sunny personality, uh, and uh, keeping good spirits even when things aren't going so well. Keep like, your sunny side up. Like today. I mean, today I've had. <laughs> this week or should I say the last two days I've had some really awful experiences but I always try to look on the bright side of life so sometimes you have to do it sometimes you have to force yourself sometimes you can do it quite easily so it, Pedro's seen flags of the the world and now he's off oh I see you've just used us used us I feel I feel used <laughs> we're joking I feel as if you spent the night with me and then you you get up in the early morning and leave before I've even woken up. Hungary wasn't there either, Mr. Duncan. No Nicaragua, 
Nicaragua. I bet you any money. I bet you ten pounds. Hungary is in that list. It is. It is there. Have another look. Keep your sunny side up. Stay looking on the bright side of life, even when things seem bad. Always look on the bright side of life. A do do, a do 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 do. Thank you very much to. So yes, a miser apparently is from the Latin miserius, poor and a lack of generosity so a miser mm. actually comes from latin i suppose there's no surprise there really see you later pedro pedro is going you can also say look on the bright side yes you can look on the bright side of life the sunny side the positive side the the fun side Anything that gives you that feeling of positivity and makes you feel happy, I suppose. Yes, because if you stay positive, it's difficult because I you wouldn't call me the most positive person in the world, would you, Mr. Duncan? I've always been. My father said to me, I can still remember him telling me you're a pessimist, not an optimist. Amongst other things. And then I was only about seven or eight at the time. And that stayed with me ever since. He probably shouldn't have said that because I do tend to look on. I tend to look for the worst things that can happen. Yes. Don't I? Yes. I don't tend to think you're the complete opposite. Mr. Duncan always thinks everything's going to be all right and will work out. I was I'm the opposite end. I would think things if it can go wrong, it will yeah. and probably will. Mm. Uh so we're both in extremes. You're an optimist. I'm a pessimist. Yes, I am quite optimistic. Even last night, last night, we got back late last night from the hospital. Very traumatic day. And we got back and we decided to have a little beer, didn't we? We thought, let's have a beer. We, we rarely drink beer. But last night, <laughs> yes. I thought... Go on. OK. That, this is a good indication of our different characters. So, as, so I thought, I, I, I said to Steve, I said, let's have a beer. We've got yes. a couple of cans of beer. They've been in the cupboard for a long time. But I thought, let's have a beer. So we, I opened the beer and I poured the beer into two small glasses. So we had half of the can each. Steve, so this gives you an insight into Steve's brain. Steve. Instead looked, of just enjoying the beer. Instead of enjoying the beer and just having a, a little moment of relaxation, he decides to look at the can that the beer had come out of to see when the sell-by date was or the use-by date. And he says, oh, oh, I don't think we should drink this beer. Oh, it's, it says December 2019. Oh, I don't, I don't think we should drink that. And I thought, I said to Steve, I said, look, for goodness sake, <laughs> just enjoy the bloody beer. Yes, because, I, because, I've, because I've read all this information on canned food that, that metals and chemicals leach out into the food. And and I didn't enjoy it at all. I only drank half of it and threw the rest away. I was convinced it was going to make me ill. Well, I drank it. I had my I had my beer and I enjoyed it. And uh, all you've done, Steve, is bring all that, all that negativity onto yourself. That's true. I, that this this the way I am. It is. It certainly is. And well, I used to work with somebody when I worked in the hospital. I mentioned this the other week. Uh, I used to work with somebody who was always very downbeat. He was always looked down in the dumps. He was always negative. Everything was his... In fact, his whole deportment was... You know, he sort of went around like that. He was he was the same age as me. Well, no, he was a bit older than me at the time. Sorry, I've got to stop you. Steve just used a word that I haven't heard for about 35 years. What? Deportment. Deportment. Your deportment. I've never... Talk about... That is a word that is actually a word that has more cobwebs on it than, than the corner of my studio. Oh, I think no one right. ever talks about deportment. Well, deportment means how do you carry yourself? Your posture. Your posture. When you walk, when you stand up. Have you got good deportment de or bad deportment? Deportment. Do you hold yourself up and stand erect Ooh. and walk with a positive stance uh, ballerinas uh, have good deportment okay because you walk 
and uh, people that are in the in the armed forces have good deportment. Sorry. So it's 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 it means that you carry yourself. You know, you're not slouching. I just love the way that you mention ballerinas and people in the army. Have you got good deportment? Uh, let's see if people use this phrase at all. Oh, we've got a, <laughs> a noisy bird outside. I upset that. Uh, uh, what's the what? What bird is it, Mr. Duncan? Oh, what do you think it is? I can't remember the name. Oh, for goodness' sake! I think uh, I think you're going to be in the next bed to my mum. <laughs> So, it's pheasant. A, it's a pheasant. It's a Thank pheasant. Uh, uh, did people hear that loud, sort of metallic call of the pheasant? I went outside earlier and I upset him. He was hiding in the bushes and he flew off in a in a panic. Okay. Uh, Tomic says I'm a wimp. Thanks for that. Yes, it's true. <laughs> I'm not a wimp. I'm not a wimp. A wimp is somebody who cowers from uh, a weak person. Yes, I'm not a weak person. Uh, he doesn't stand up for himself and uh, is afraid to um, stand up to people or to take on new challenges. Hmm. That isn't actually me. Just a, pe a don't person. Agree with you there. Uh, just a weak, weak person. A, a person with a weak character. Yes, you uh, can't stand. <laughs> I always. If you if you say you're negative yeah. or 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 or, or uh, somebody who who is um, thinks negatively, that that's not the same thing as a wimp. That's a different thing altogether. A wimp is somebody who doesn't stand up for himself. Yes, yeah, just we a weak person. Yes. Weak. That's it. That is not me, Mr. Duncan. I, I can stand up for myself. I just you wait. <laughs> okay, we get it. <laughs> I find that very hard to believe. Uh, somebody says, I don't have a good department. Uh, yes, deportment. Deport. Yes, it means if you slouch. Wait there. I, I will put the word if you slouch your shoulders are round and your neck is bent. And you sort of shuffle about. Deportment, it means you carry yourself in a nice positive way. Your neck is straight, your shoulders are back. And uh, I think it makes you you feel more positive if you walk. And that actually is a, is, is, is a scientific fact. Okay. If you actually uh, feel... Well, when you see somebody, if they're feeling worried or afraid, they, they sort of... You know, they they their their whole deportment changes, and they they sort of go into themselves. But if you, they've found that if you actually, That's you can increase your make your mood better by just standing, okay, and and acting like you were positive, Ooh. and that actually changes. It has an effect of changing your mood. So doing something physical change can change your mind, okay, as well as the other way round. Okay, let's 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 draw a line under that. Yes, graceful way of carrying yourself. Here's another one. It's all water under the bridge. Something that has happened that you want to forget about. Maybe a disagreement that you've had with someone that you know. Maybe something that you want to forget about. Maybe you had a fight with your friend or partner and now you want to forget all about it. We can say that it is all water under the bridge. It's over. Well, let's forget about our differences. Let's forget about the fights that we had. Wouldn't it be lovely if the USA and Iran said, let's forget about it. It's all water under the bridge. Of course, it isn't That's going to happen because things have really escalated over the past few days for, yes, re you... for reasons I'm not going to go into. Just like water that flows, constantly flows and new water comes along. Mm. In life, events happen, they go and new events come along. Yes. And, you know, it's don't keep hanging on to those past events. That's it. Don't worry about uh, it. Let it flow away. Let it flow away just like water would under a bridge. Flow away. And you have arguments with friends or family. Uh, and uh, sometimes for a long period, you know, you might not talk to somebody for weeks or months or years in some cases. Or, I had a friend I didn't speak to for 10 years. Or never again. And then when you meet up and you talk about it, you think, oh, that's not so bad. And then you say, and then they might say, well, I, I apologise for what I did to you, those bad things I did to you. Uh, and you might say, let's forget about it. It's water under the bridge. You've it's just gone. You've just reminded me of something. I remember many years ago, my, my father and my my uncle uh, virtually getting into a fist fight 
in, in the back garden of our house when, when they were trying to put a greenhouse up in the back garden. And my father called my uncle a wimp. He called him a wimp. And, the, and, and my, my uncle got very angry and they started sort of but well, they weren't really fighting with their fists, but it, it almost became violent. However, my uncle left the house in a hurry. He sped off in his Citroen. He had one of these cars called a Citroen French car. And, and it was very strange because when you started the car up, it would it would rise on a cushion of air. Very strange. I always thought his car was like something from the future. So if you remember Citroens during the early 1980s, they actually looked like cars from the future because they would they would take off. They would hover slightly when you started them up. Yes, they did. They were very comfortable, though. They were they, they did have, I think, sort of air springs. And so they were very comfortable. Mm. Tomic, I forgive you for calling me a wimp. It's water under the bridge. However accurate you were. I think he probably meant because I was frightened at the sound of the bird. So, yes, when it comes to things like that, maybe I am a bit of a wimp. Yes. Uh, if an animal came near me or, or somebody looked angry and wanted to beat me up, I think I would be a bit of a wimp. If someone is really scared, we can say that they are afraid of their own shadow. Maybe a person yes. who is who is a real coward or a person who is a wimp. If you said to somebody, uh, there's a spider in the corner of that room, will you remove it? And somebody might scream and they might not like the spider and you might call them a wimp. You wouldn't maybe not. A, you wouldn't call a girl a wimp if she didn't like if she didn't like a spider. You would call a man a wimp if if he couldn't pick up a spider and put it out. Well, well we wimp. Well, we all know that women don't like spiders anyway. So so you don't have to say that, do you? Really? Not to a woman, but you would to a man. Because yeah. all women, all women, every single woman on the planet that they're all afraid of spiders, aren't you? I know you are. You're sitting there now saying, Mr. Duncan, you're right. I am a woman and I'm afraid of spiders. I, I think so. I, I'm 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 101 percent sure that that's true. Oh, Tomek was saying it in reference to the point that I only drunk. Uh, I, I overstated the, the my worries about the beer being out of date. As usual. I was worried that I might get poisoned by this, it. This Maybe. Al always happens. Overcautious. Yes, overcautious. Anything Steve does, he's always worried. We can't have any fun, really, without Steve finding one thing to, to worry about. Anything, whatever it is, anything. I always look for... I mean, it's healthy in a way to always be able to see whether somebody that something is dangerous yes, or not that's okay or what could go wrong that's healthy but if you fixate on that too much then it becomes uh, a bit of a disorder mm. uh, and uh, you, you there's only so much you can do in situations to to uh, mitigate the the, the danger <laughs> what? of something uh, to reduce, if you mitigate something, it means you reduce, okay. reduce, don't, don't you? I'm loving your your uh, choice of words. Deportment is is the best word yes. that I've heard in a long time. Deportment. Well, if you don't carry yourself, oh, no. okay, don't explain it all with again. With deportment, when you're young, then you, as you get older, you okay. You mustn't let it slide. Steve, you don't have to explain it again. There is a rewind button on on the player, so so you could, if you want to know what's what deportment means. Go back about 15 minutes on the live stream and you will see Steve talking about a word that no one on the planet uses anymore. Cecilia is not uh, not afraid of spiders, but uh, is afraid of snakes. Yeah, I think I would be pretty afraid of snakes. I would. Yes, it, it, it uh, depends where it is, really. I mean, in this country, you shouldn't need to be afraid of snakes because we haven't really got any poisonous snakes. No. But what if there what what if there's a lot of snakes around you and they and they've got baseball bats? C can you be afraid of them then? I think so. I would. It also depends where the snake is. Maybe it's going up your trouser leg, in which case you have to be very afraid. We have, I believe, do we not soon? A tea cake and Ooh, a cup of tea waiting. A tea cake and a cup of tea waiting. 
yes oh very nice uh, we're doing a slightly longer one today because i wasn't here on friday because my poor mummy was taken into hospital she's still in hospital now thanks for your lovely messages by the way yes. thanks a lot today don't want to talk too much about it but yes silence on the live stream that must be a first that doesn't happen very often must be the first time that's ever happened the only time we get silence on here is when i forget to open the microphone <laughs> a lot of snakes in brazil that is correct i've heard this yes yes well in in the forests uh, yeah, giant anacondas and and adders and all sorts of rattlesnakes probably I think rattlesnakes are more in the sort of deserty areas. Yes. Uh, but uh, yes, lots of venomous, dangerous snakes. Yes. Well, we've seen programs about that every year. Hundreds, thousands of people die. I'll make of, your mind uh, up. Is, of, it hundreds uh, of, is it hundreds or thousands? Millions. I think it's millions. Is it billions? Uh, die of, <laughs> of snake bites because they, they, oh, you, you have to have your limbs chopped off and all sorts of things. Steve, have you ever come face to face with a snake? Uh, yes, because my... <laughs> Depends what kind of snake you're talking about, Mr. Duncan. Oh, I don't know what you mean. What? You what? know what you mean. Oh, these, I've just realised these running shoes are very uncomfortable. Ooh. Oh, OK. Oh, I've they're got not, uh, pins and needles in my feet. They're not very good running shoes if they're making your feet hurt. I know. But they're not me you're not meant to stand in them. You're meant to run in them. That's probably why they're uncomfortable. What, what brand are they? Uh, well, um, let's have a look. A6. That does not sound like a brand. That yeah, I've... it is. It, that's a... Never heard of them. Steve has bought some cheap sneakers. No, they're not. A6, A-S-C-I, I think, something like that. Oh, it's basics. No, it's not basics. It starts with an A. It starts with an A. A A6. A6. Let me have a look. Let's see if I can... Well, I've seen, I've seen the, uh, there we go. These are my running shoes. Oh, that's stinky. Stinky running shoes. A6, A-S-I-C-S. -S. That's it. That's just I've never, that's the first time I've ever worn them. Because I bought them, you see. I bought these, they were in a sale. I do a lot of running and I bought them in a sale. I'm glad you can't smell this. Oh, that's There's just... nothing wrong with those. There's, no, that, that's just the glue. That's you. the glue because it's new. I've never, I've never actually, this is the first time I've ever worn them because I bought them at the end of the summer and um, they were in a sale and I needed some more new running shoes. Okay. But, of course, it's winter now and I didn't want to get them dirty and muddy so I haven't actually used these. I've been using my winter running shoes which are oh, designed for running in the... In okay. the uh, so yes, they were actually quite expensive. <laughs> Let's have a look. So there are people. Can you believe it? There are people who who actually enjoy smelling and sniffing other people's shoes. They actually find it stimulating. I don't know why they do that because I can't I stand. stand I hate the smell. Oh, you wimp, Mr. Duncan! You wimp. Well, I think that's like saying that you like smelling other people's farts yeah, you can see I, I haven't i haven't even been running in these i haven't used them look how clean the soles are yeah that's why i've got them on in the house because i actually took them straight out of the box so okay. i should be using these <laughs> fascinating when the weather is better okay um, I, I i'm i'm sure you're really pleased to hear all of that news about mr steve's new sneakers back to snakes no i haven't come face to face the only yes okay i won't say that there is, um, would you call this an idiom? Another another word for, shall I say, it, Mr. Duncan? It's a little rude. No, probably not. No, okay. no, don't. Well, you, I think it's just. No, it's not rude. Uh, yes, uh, I suppose. I suppose it can be a sort of euphemism. Euphemism, not an idiom. Not 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 a euthanasiaism. Okay. A euphemism, a, an alternative word for something. If you were to use the word trouser snake. That was the <laughs> <laughs> trouser, 
trouser snake look can i just say that you have opened this door and now you must walk through it no you opened the door i did not by saying have you come face to face with any snakes i did not mention snakes and you then did. you giggled you mentioned snakes no somebody else mentioned snakes on here actually who shall uh, we? it was uh i can't remember who it was now i can't remember either yes yeah, so oh, sam oh sam or osman asks where are you in britain we are in a place called much wenlock much wenlock is a tiny little town and we live there so does anybody know what the phrase trouser snake means it's a part of the body it's a it's part a, of the body it's a part of the male body it's a man's body part so women don't have trouser snakes well actually they might they might nowadays actually nowadays they might you see you see we live in this world where everyone wants to swap and change it's a little bit like having one of those modern drills have you seen those tools that you can buy and, and you can put anything on the end of them and some people like to change their tools so they take that off and put something else on there instead so yet yeah, they might so a lady might have a trouser snake she might decide that that's what she wants for her birthday Hailey Quang says, why didn't you buy Nike shoes? They're better than Asics. Well, that's a matter of opinion. OK, a matter of opinion. So that's something that uh, probably can't be proved, but is something that you could debate. How, how do you prove that? Well, that's what, why it's a matter of opinion. Yes. If you say a matter of opinion, you're referring to a subject that you can't actually prove one way or the other or would be difficult to prove. You so it's dependent on <laughs> I think in different countries, different brands have different levels of status. Yes. Uh, Nike or Nike. I don't know how you pronounce it now. Nike. Nike. In the 80s and 90s in the UK, Nike was the top brand. Uh, I think it was. If you had Nike trainers, you were really something there were many brands there I, were I, but nike was one of the top ones but now i don't think they're in the uk i don't think nike are quite seen as one of the top brands anymore well there was a little bit of controversy about nike wasn't there so uh, i think it was all to do with the the uh, american football players not kneeling or kneeling on the ground and i think it had something to do with that taking a knee oh. so i think it has <laughs> something to do with that Okay. Talking about trouser snakes has woken Jeff up. <laughs> oh. He's made a comment. Jeff has woken up. Jeff was there, but the mention of trouser snake and we certainly know, in there with a comment. We've certainly know how to get Jeff's attention. Yes, a big snake in the trousers, That's says it. Cecilia. Cecilia. Uh, I'm surprised that Cecilia would say that. I'm mm. finding out a lot of things today about you out there in YouTube land. What, yes, well, yes, Santorino says, of course, uh, the police, uh, if you're looking for somebody that's missing, a missing person, or you want to find somebody, you, you give the dog the uh, uh, somebody's shoe. Or and underwear. Then, and of course, they will, having very good scent memory, uh, they, <laughs> they will track down that person. They have a keen sense of smell. Yes. Certain types of dogs, not all dogs. Mm. I mean, you never see a chihuahua. On, in a search party looking for someone i tell you the reason i use asics over over nike is because i've got very wide feet uh very broad feet and th this particular brand it, uh it, it tends to have a much broader fitting uh I, when, when i used to be when i was young oh my gosh did they have uh, did they have sneakers then a few I years thought ago people just run around in bare feet through the mud so when I was uh, when I was growing up, my my mummy and daddy took me to a shoe shop to be measured to have shoes. You used to do you remember in the I don't know if people do this in other Please countries. Don't say in the olden days. Uh, but when we used to grow up, when you went to when we uh, used to grow up, <laughs> maybe they still do it for children. I suppose they do. They they put your foot into a measure and find out what size f your foot is before <laughs> they give you the. What, what shoes to wear and uh, it does help you're not you're not just going to put any any shoe on a child are you a big clown shoe can you see your son or daughter walking around with giant long shoes just because the person in the shop 
couldn't be bothered to measure their foot so quite often with a child you have to measure their foot because their feet are still growing and i used to work in footwear you do many you years did. <laughs> not anymore you did rather not you any... do that's the present tense although you did although the past tense although due to the smell in the studio it feels as if i am working in footwear again You're joking but the point i was making mr duncan oh okay you were making i was a making point. a point were you, you rudely interrupted were you making a point what was the point i was making <laughs> Something about something about the shoes. I was making it. I was making a point about the shoes. What were we saying just before? You, 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 well, you, you interrupted me, so it's up to you to remind me of what I was talking about. Uh, what are you talking about? Says Jim Miller. <laughs> that was a good question. <laughs> Steve has no idea. He can't. Oh yes, about broad fitting. That was it. Uh, thank you, Tomic, for reminding me. Uh, so I read your 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 message and then it reminded me. So they used to say to me uh, when I was a child, the assistant in the shops used to say, "Oh, has he got six toes?" Because my foot was so wide, they used to laugh and joke. They could never find feet uh, shoes to fit my wide feet, and they used to joke that I had six toes. So there you go. I just thought I'd th just throw that little story in. Wow. So what I is, do have broad feet. What is the difference between an idiom and a euphemism? Well, an idiom is something that is often used in a way that it's not designed to be used. So an idiom is a kind of expression. However, euphemism is something slightly different. So you will say something that is rude or naughty or something that might be offensive, but you use something else that isn't offensive in its place for example um i'm trying to think of well i suppose trouser snake trouser snake trouser snake is a euphemism for the male appendage okay. we've said it well, we've was, said it well i was going to say appendage yes. i said appendage and he said the other word a euphemism another way of a, a, a different word or expression for something uh there we go. But, uh, OK. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> uh, Nike has an offer running shoes. So, yo, know, Tomek says that you can get uh, wider shoe fittings in Nike. <laughs> so that's, uh, Sorry, that's good to know. Is it, I feel like I'm working in the shoe shop again. You did. You worked in a shoe shop. Yes, many years For many ago. many years. Many, many years ago before, yes. I, before I got a proper job. I used to spend all day looking at people's stinky feet. It was only a part time short affair before I went on to become an international YouTube star. Well, that the thing, uh, uh, Noemi Al Sur says, I wear Nike sneakers. Seems that they're very, very popular, these Nike. Welcome to uh, Sneaker Talk, a new podcast where we talk for hours and hours about foot width and they're, they're, foot. they're obviously comfortable and foot. i think certain brands because of your feet shape of your feet certain brands are more comfortable for you than others uh, i used to like uh, adidas uh, shoes but anyway okay who are you talking to is there someone else in this room yeah, you keep so, look there. you see so looking over there as if there's someone there who's there that's what i'm thinking i'm looking off when i'm thinking yeah. and my brain's working away you are always looking off do you have flat feet no i don't have flat feet i've got a lovely arch i've got a lovely arch in my foot i don't have flat feet no but they're they're quite wide i can, I, I can walk on water actually they're so wide and many people say to me, you know, aren't you, you can walk on water, you're such a wonderful person. <laughs> what? If you say to somebody, uh, if, you, if someone's walking on water, if you say someone's walking on water, they're, they're uh, of course, going back to biblical times. If you talk about the Bible, of course, Jesus Christ could walk on water, if you believe the stories, of course. So if somebody says to you, oh, you can walk on water, they're saying that you're at the same level as uh, as Jesus. Um, but we must be careful what we say there. He's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. 
Well, there was a famous story, wasn't there? A famous uh, story. <laughs> in the Bible. In the Bible. Uh, so, then where, where Jesus walked on water. Uh, but, we, you know, we, I, I remember these stories because we sort of grew up with them in, so in school. Did he, did did Is there actually a story where he does walk on water? Because oh, yes. I don't think there is. Yes, there is. There there's, is. There's one yes. where he drank a lot of water. No, he walked on water. Definitely, I remember and there, it. And there was another guy that, that could part the water. Noah. And there was... <laughs> it wasn't Noah. And there was the other was? guy. Wasn't it? No, no. Sure, it was Noah. That was oh, Mo no, it was the ark. It was Moses. Moses parted the waters. You're right. Yes, if you believe this, if you believe it, you, you know, so stories. Did, stories. Did, did you learn much about the Bible at school? Because you seem to be making this stuff up. Look, Tomek says you've offended people who work in shoe shops now. Have I? By saying yes, then I got a proper job. Well, yes. Well, we're, well, no one starts a career. <laughs> just offended all shop Sorry. assistants. Not shop assistants, just people at <laughs> every that, shoe shop around the world. Just shoe shops. <laughs> but it is. But it is the worst job in the world. It can't be the worst job in the world, Mister okay, Duncan. It's, I, I, it's, I think you should, you know, not dig yourself into a I'm hole. I'm not digging a hole. I've done it. I've done the job, and and so I I'm in a position where I can actually say that that job literally stinks literally you have to spend all day you get people coming in off the streets and they want to be measured or they want to try on a pair of shoes and i used to have to put up with some of the worst smelling feet ever some of some of the feet were awful so and sometimes the toes were all sticking out the ends Bye bye, Belarusia. Belarusia's going. See you later, Belarus. Tomek's already gone. See you later. Talking of bad jobs, okay. when we were visiting your mother in hospital, that suddenly reminds you of what nurses have to do in a hospital. OK. They have to do some things which uh, you would never want to have to do normally in normal everyday life would you that i mean the things that they have to do to care for people in hospital that's got to be one of the most fantastic jobs to do uh and it's not very well paid i, I wouldn't yes I, some of the things that you have to do if you're a it's nurse a job to admire that is oh here, here we go we've got a we've got a new nickname for mr steve we what can, we could call mr steve the hobbit the because hobbit. because hobbits this is another book. This time we're not talking about the Hobbit. I know The Hobbit, Mr Duncan. Okay. We is... read that at school. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> you're, not, you're not getting it confused with the Bible, are you? <laughs> it, it would appear that you are. But, yes. Well, they're all stories. They are stories, that's true. But, yes, because in the story by Tolkien... Tol yeah. Tol J.R. Tolkien, yes, I know. <laughs> I know, Mr Duncan. J.R. Tolkien? Yeah, that's his... Uh... What was his name then? His full name? John, I don't know. Jeremiah. Jacob. I don't know what his first name was, but he's known as J.R. So it's not the same guy that wrote Game of Thrones. But apparently the hobbits, all of the hobbits have very wide feet. Oh, their right. feet are almost square shaped because they're, they're large. So, yes, you are right. <laughs> Mr. Steve is full of himself, says... Uh, Serene. I'm it's I'm it's all acting. Thank I just you. joke. I just joke. Thank you. Fine. I'm just doing it for comic effect. Finally, someone has noticed that Steve is really full of himself. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, somebody new, Trin Trin Nguyen watching in Vietnam says, hello, it's my very first time that I'm here. Thank you very much, Trin. Thank you. Trin, you win. You deserve a round of applause. Think well, so. Welcome to my live chat. <laughs> it's always nice to know that we've got new people watching and that they make comments. It's always nice to know when anyone's watching. <laughs> Because a lot of time people are watching, but they're not making comments. So we don't know they're there. So ask us a question. Okay. I'm not usually here, of course. No, Steve's uh, normally off with the off somewhere else. He's off with the fairies. People seem to think we're promoting brands. Your Adidas, Nike, Asics. I've we'll get been, them all in. I've only been wearing Adidas clothes on my 
videos for about the past 12 or 13 years well of course we'd love to be sponsored by any of those particular brands wouldn't we mr duncan or anyone <laughs> whatever you do maybe i don't know maybe you run a shoe shop and you want to sponsor me although well, I, <laughs> I have a feeling i have a, fe I have a feeling <laughs> i have a feeling after today i don't think any shoe shop or any shoe manufacturer is going to they're not going to sponsor this are I think they you've burnt your bridges there mr duncan I have, there's I've... another little idiom we've got in there yeah. burnt your bridges it means that there's no way back you said or done something mm. that is so upsetting that there's no way that uh, you can go back to where you were before okay with a person or an organization so for example uh you might leave your job and um you might before you go you might uh swear at the boss and tell him to get lost and say you're the worst boss ever or do something awful yes yeah, you might you might have have a poo on his office desk exactly you take a dump you could you take a giant wet steam something so bad a big poo on his desk that you could never go back to that job again that's it no one would ever accept you back in never. no matter what never whereas if you just left and just sort of said goodbye i hope everything goes all right in the future you might have had a job offer back there but because you made a dump on his desk as mr duncan said you won't can be able to go back can i just say i've never done that i've never actually taken a giant dump on any boss or any boss's desk just so we're clear on that when are we going mr duncan it's we're getting not. dark outside <laughs> it's getting dark getting in hungry it's getting dark in here well, we were talking about euthanasia earlier. That no. was a very dark subject. OK, then, and one that we'd moved on from and now we've returned to. Thanks to you. Thank you, Steve. Well, we're going in a moment because we've been here for two hours. So an, an extra long one, just the way Steve likes it. <laughs> Today. Today. <sighs> Nobody. Anyway, now I won't go back to Trouser Snake. We've dealt with that one. OK, so another thing to mention today, we were able to tempt Mr. Steve into the studio by offering this one of Mr. Steve's favorite snacks. But the big question is, what will the snack be next week? What will the the snack that I will be using to tempt Mr. Steve into the studio? What will it be next week? Find out. Don't forget also I'm back with you on Wednesday and Friday as well, hopefully. And also next Sunday. We'll be back together next Sunday, won't we? Yes, if you let me, Mr. Duncan. We will see what I'll happens. Inv are you inviting me on next Sunday? If the fates allow, we if will. If the fates allow. We will be here. That's a Christmas song. Well, I'll toddle off. Shall I, Mr. Duncan? Yes, I'll you, go prepare you, the you. tea and tea cakes. Yes, I am. I'm quite hungry. I'm quite peckish, to be honest. Do you want another quick sniff of my uh, virtually unused trainers? No, no, we won't do that. I do not want to sniff your... No, I think this is some kind of fetish show. No, I don't want to sniff your sneakers, to be honest. Deep fried Mars bar. No, we're just having... Yes, and I will be preparing the meal for tonight we haven't got salmon tonight because we haven't got any in the fridge we need to do a shop so we haven't discussed that mr duncan what we're going to eat tonight <laughs> well maybe we can discuss that later beans on toast when we're, when we're not doing a live stream Tata, everybody and uh, hopefully see you next week bye bye he's gone mr steve has left the building k says are you having a deep fried mars bar i like the sound of that do you know what i actually fancy a deep fried mars bar that sounds quite nice in fact well i'm going it's time to say goodbye i've been here for two hours i hope you've enjoyed today's busy lesson sorry once again for not being with you on friday as i explained earlier some circumstances some things occurred that i had to sort out thank you very much for your company thank you for watching i will see you on wednesday at 2 p.m 
UK time also don't forget if you want to don't forget you can like and subscribe if you like what you're watching don't forget to give me a lovely like click like now go on click like it's easy you just move down under the video and click like give me a lovely fresh thumbs up and also if you like this you can also give me your time every week with a subscription so maybe you can subscribe to my channel as well that's it it's time to go almost time to say goodbye thank you very much to maria rosa olga thank you very much for watching me during this live stream a very long one today very long thanks also to mr steve for joining me today i enjoyed your company as well he said you're welcome bye anna bye rosa bye bye to highly quang palmyra very great to see you all here today thanks for your lovely messages of support during my rather difficult time i will be back with you on wednesday at 2 p.m uk time this is mr duncan in the birthplace of english saying thanks for watching see you on wednesday take care stay safe and of course until the next time we meet right here on youtube ta-ta for now